Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Origins 2018. I'm sitting down with Ken Hill and Jim Harmon from, well, Rio Grande Games and designer of Breathwords. So, brand new game from you. Congratulations. Thank you. So, a little bit about Broadhorns. This is a game that Jim designed. Uh, we both live in Columbus and are both active in the cabs community. And uh, I volunteered to help Jim with some of the development. And Although I'm going to interject there, Columbus Area Board Game Society. Society. You got uh -huh. it, if you didn't know what cabs was. And so Jim worked on this game for five years. Eight years. Yep, so <laughs> a long time coming. So a Broadhorn is a flat bottom wooden river boat that was floated down the Mississippi River in the pre-steamboat era. So in the, the idea of the game is that you're starting in St. Louis with your Broadhorn, you're loading it up with cargo, and you're floating down the river to meet the demands of the hungry people that live along the Mississippi River. When you end your, your turn uh, down the river, you break apart your boat, get some money, go back to St. Louis and start it all over again. <laughs> so, um, there's some, some unique features of this game. We have a nice market mechanism here. This is the, the market. There's a draw bag where you're drawing out barrels of different colors. As you can see right, we've got this market set up here. There's lots of white, which is flour, red apples, pink pork. So they're cheap. They cost a dollar. There's no whiskey right now. Aww. So in order to be able to buy whiskey, it'll cost you four dollars. So one of the things that happens on your turn is after this market, uh, after people purchase things out of the market, then you're going to draw new uh, new barrels and put them on the market. And so the prices are constantly changing. So there's lots of variability. So you're going to load those goods on your broadhorn, and then you're going to take actions during your turn. And those actions include moving down the river. You stop at a city like St. Genevieve, and you can see from St. Genevieve, it wants to buy pork and wheat, and it will pay $3 for a barrel of pork and $2 for a barrel of wheat. And if you deliver both those cargoes to St. Genevieve, you'll get a $1 bonus, which you can see just above the V in there. And then you will also take possession of that tile, and that tile gives you some bonuses, uh, and the potential will have some bonuses at the end of the game. The thing that's over by Beth's thumb right here is what cargoes can be purchased in St. Genevieve. So when your boat docks in St. Genevieve, you sell stuff, you buy stuff, and you can continue down, down the river. Um, we also have a number of different special cards that affect game player, and Beth is going to grab those. So Johnny, want to describe the cards? Sure. So. Um so these, the three special cards are these two and this one. Uh -huh, here, hang on. I, I, I am capable of holding okay. three. <laughs> so um, this one gives you a speed bonus now to make your boat go faster. This one allows you to buy any cargoes from the market because the towns only sell certain, each town only sells certain cargoes. This one allows you to buy a cargo that isn't normally available. And the other special card is that one, which is ice, which... Um, one of the things with going down the river with these goods is they spoil. And there's a timer on the boats that you're going to be putting them on. Um, here, I'm going to do that little side by side here. Okay. So you put the, the barrels on this first space, and during the game, they're going to tick a timer to oh, the Oh, that's clever. And what the ice does is allow you to skip one of the ticks. So having the ice will help preserve your goods as you get down the river. Um, and the farther down the river you can get, the more money you're going to make selling your goods. Makes sense. Um, in addition to selling goods, there's also travelers um, that you can pick up along the way at different towns. If you stop at the town, you can take the traveler on your boat. And if you take him to the destination, you'll get the uh, money on the card. Um, we should also mention that there's different size boats. So you have to decide if you want to take a small boat, a medium boat, ah, or so a big got... boat. And there's several different um, variables on those boats, but one of them is the number of travelers you can take down the road. Yeah, so, there's also the, the speed of the boat, how much the boat costs, and how much cargo you can see. This 30-foot Broadhorn can carry five pieces of cargo, while the 40-footer can carry seven. 
your movement is also variable depending on what season of the year ah. you're in. So winter, spring, summer all have different different powers that, that change the gameplay, so there's lots of variability. Um, also, there's many of these tiles that for each city so that not every not every game is going to be exactly the same. So there's an awful lot going on, but it's not too much that will overwhelm even a, a, a sort of a family game. You can still get the, get the family to play it. It's not that difficult to, to figure out. And Jim, you were saying that this was eight years in the making. Yeah. Was there any particular inspiration for the, the boat themselves, the region of the country? It's actually... Back in high school, I studied this area of history, and I always was fascinated by it. So that's where it really came from. And I wanted to design a, you know, a game on trading down in the city. I don't know. Hey, why I just not? thought it was interesting. And um, yeah, so started out, and it's been through a lot of changes, but I'm really happy with um, what we have here. And, yeah. uh, and as you can see, the, 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 we think it's a very attractive game. Uh, the artwork was done by Klaus Steffen. There's some, it's very thematic. Uh, even our first player marker is this guy with <laughs> oh, this giant oar. Yeah, giant oar, right, there he is. There, there he is. <laughs> so, uh, we think it's an attractive game to put on the table, um, and lots of variability. It's, we've had a lot of fun, and I actually helped with a lot of the development, and then when it went into the production cycle, I actually missed playing the game. So I was happy when it came out so I could play it play again. Play it again. <laughs> Now, uh, let's talk just some logistics. How many players? How long do you think a game would take? Uh, two to four players. Yeah. Um, it depends on, you know, if you, I'd say 45 minutes for a two player game, 90 minutes for a four player game, and I, it shouldn't take more than, longer than that. Um, you know, it also depends on how much people want to think. You can certainly <laughs> play this game very, you know, one of the things that's interesting about it is you you do have to be aware of what other players are doing in the game because you have to know that hey Jim might be delivering cargo down to a certain point in the river that I'm also gonna I'm also gonna try to deliver and there's only one spot for my barrel I can only deliver apples to you know to uh, Vicksburg with and he's gonna beat me to it so maybe I've got a special move card or I'm gonna have to take a triple move in order to get in front of it so there's lots of you do have to pay a close attention to what, what other players are playing. You can play the game without watching what other people are doing, but you're not going to do it. <laughs> and one, one thing about the game is, every time you deliver to a town, one of these barrels is going to go on the season track, which is what's going to drive the game. So the players actually have a little control over the game end, because right, how long? if they deliver a lot more, the game will go faster. So, and one thing that's interesting about the season track is, only these perishable goods go on the season track. The fur and the whiskey don't perish. So as the game progresses, all the perishable goods get taken out of the game. They become much more expensive until you get to this last barrel and then the harvest comes in, all those barrels go back in the back for the final season. I love it when mechanics tie into what makes sense in real life, mm -hmm. that of course autumn would have that influx of all those perishable goods. Like that. I feel just not only helps you to play the game because you can tie it to something that makes sense outside of said game. And we've even done this where in the springtime the water's up, you get more movement, movement. <laughs> goods spoil faster in summer when it's hot. So free refrigeration. Well, Jim, congratulations on finally getting your dream <laughs> into real life. Ken, thank you for helping to develop. And if you guys want to check that out, this is Broad Horns, which is going to be published by Rio Grande Games. Oh, it's out now. Out, out right now. Go get it. <laughs> That's right. Thanks again, Beth.